Hey there everybody, and welcome back to more Dead Space 2. Last time you may remember that we had just boarded the Ishimura, and... Well, that was obviously a bad idea. computer in the uh, the flight lounge I I can check the ship's status from there are you okay you sound a little nervous last time I was here things didn't go so well look I'll contact you soon <sighs> well that is quite a bit of an understatement I'm actually going to be keeping commentary pretty minimal for this entire chapter this is mostly just a nice little atmospheric recap of some of the areas that were originally visited in Dead Space 1. Some of this will be very familiar to those that have watched the LP or played it yourselves. Such as this particular room right here is, well, where we actually first saw our, our first encounter with Necromorphs as they tore apart pretty much most of our uh, landing party. Just a text log outlining, well, somebody's been backing up the toilets, and it's not really sitting too well with the guy that has to clean them up. systems offline. Main centrifuge offline for repairs. Damn it. That's what I thought. What? The gravity centrifuge is under repair. I'm gonna have to go down to engineering. This should be interesting. Is it safe? I don't know how it could be. I'll let you know.
and this is another fairly recognizable room from Dead Space 1. This is actually, if I recall correctly, where we actually got the plasma cutter. And you can actually see where they tried to clean off, uh, I think it said cut off their limbs. Very similar in a tutorial sense from what we've seen in the second game. And also, since there is a working bench here, and we have plenty of power nodes, I would think it might be good to go ahead and upgrade stasis a bit more. I think that's actually going to be the last bit of stasis we are going to be upgrading for the rest of the game. That'll make it a lot more useful. And though it is a bit jarrable and pretty much impossible to understand, these are actually audio logs and different things like that from the first Dead Space. It appears that some of these makeshift construction tunnels, uh, not all of them have fared so well. Obviously, you didn't think this entire chapter would be completely without enemies, right? Well, yeah. They decide, why don't we uh, go ahead and scare the shit out of you with a brute? Thankfully, as you can tell, the contact beam actually does fairly well against them. As long as you're accurate.
Yes, while this particular chapter starts out fairly light on enemies and very heavy on atmosphere, about halfway through it decides... Isaac! Isaac, they're swarming into the ship! It decides, well, you were missing out on some enemies, so here's a lot of enemies. Hopefully, though, you have come well prepared because there's not as many stores or upgrade points or even save points as you might normally be, uh, well, expecting. And that's kind of obvious considering that this, uh, this entire place is basically supposed to be decommissioned. I'm really only supposed to have the bare minimum necessary to keep running. But it may actually be a bit hard to tell, but what we're walking through right now is actually one of the mini tram, tram systems that would allow players to get from one chapter to another in Dead Space 1. You never actually got a chance to walk around in them beforehand, so it's a nice little change. Nice little behind the scenes, if you will. And something that we managed to pick up off that second brute was the final, I think, semiconductor we'll get in the game, the diamond semiconductor. Gives us a nice 25,000 credit uh, bonus. And I'm actually going to go ahead and spend quite a bit on power nodes and a little bit on some healing, or no, plasma energy. And you may be wondering why there, the, why there is an upgraded version of the store, and that's because, well, they're not actually decommissioning this uh, particular planet cracker. They're probably going to bring it back out into service. Dr. Heidi Latchford, research summary organic material analysis. There are several shocking findings relating to the sludge-like material found throughout the Ishimura. First, it is human DNA. Second, and far more disturbing, it reanimates in the presence of a marker signal. The only conclusion we can come to is that the entire Ishimura crew was infected and reconstructed and then fell into a soupy DNA sludge when the Aegis 7 marker was destroyed. Why? 
And in that room, as you can tell, or if you remember from Dead Space 1, was another rather memorable set piece. I'm sure that it's uh, incredibly safe now. But I was thinking of upgrading the force gun, but you know, really, the detonator has been kind of lacking, and I think it could do for a little bit of a damage boost and a capacity boost. Actually, pretty expensive to upgrade that just for the few simple upgrades to it, but hopefully it should be a little bit better to us. See? Totally safe. Something you want to be very careful with as you get this power node in this dead end is that it has a bit of a ambush that spawns in behind you. It's a really dangerous ambush, actually. But you can actually, well, as you've been able to tell, the all-encompassing silence of the Ishimura actually allows for uh, the audio cues of enemies spawning in to be a bit more easier to tell. Though that doesn't always help you with figuring out which direction they're coming from.
zero gravity. And here we are at the centrifuge, which actually poses our primary and I think only puzzle in the Ishimura. Well, the centrifuge is not currently working, and that's due to its missing a few parts. As you can tell from the blinking red lights on some of the objects, we actually had to grab onto them. And there's a series of tubing on the outside of the... Well, I, I don't think they're actually batteries, they're more or less just tubing pieces. And well, we had to put these tubing pieces into place on the center object in the centrifuge. Fairly easy task of just matching up the piping on the separate pieces to the piping on the overall center piece there. Hmm. Oh yeah, there's one more piece to get. There it is. all those in place. Well, we got another schematic down here. Nice uh, force energy schematic that might, that might actually come in useful. But yeah, now we can safely turn on the centrifuge to harness the uh, gravity tethers, I think? Yeah, gravity tethers to allow us to get to the government sector. It should just be an easy task of getting back to Ellie and Strauss and continuing on to the government sector. But obviously, you didn't think it was going to be that easy to get out of decontamination, did you? Yeah, for those who remember this ambush from Dead Space 1, it was a little bit easier than what we're going to be running into here. First we have a rather simple wave after wave of the pack to get through, but uh, I'm looking to conserve some ammo. So thankfully it's not too difficult to swat them down. The problem isn't the pack though. The problem is enhanced slashers and pewters. Uh, 
thankfully, with the upgrades we made to the force gun, it's actually making pretty quick work of them. But note to self, even the upgraded plasma cutter, not really the best choice for uh, enhanced pukers. is starting to worry me. Son, Listen, I, I would never, I would never. But son, daddy's not a murderer. Strauss, I would Strauss. never hurt you. He's not me. real. Yes, he is. You can't see him because you haven't taken the steps, Strauss. You will make put down the step screwdriver. Three, step three. Ah! Strauss, <laughs> Ellie, Ellie, shit. Since we aren't really doing so hot any more on medical gels, I figured might as well go pick up at least one. He won't look at me. How's it going at your end? And please tell me this plan is going to work. I'm almost there. I'm headed to the bridge now to activate the gravity tethers. All good. They're swarming in through a hole in the medical deck. At least you won't have to go through there. Unexpected obstruction ahead. Shutting down. Welcome to the medical deck. Crap. It certainly seems like everything is very coincidentally coming together to really fuck with Isaac. But, I mean, it can't be that bad in there. Right. 
Um, yeah, see you next time for the rest of the Ishimura.